So that gives us access to a small amount of the memory. So a section of the DRAM, a section of uh, instruction RAM. How about the rest of the memories? So this is accessed via a new ARM block for Cortex-M devices, uh, and that's the AxiBus. So the AxiBus is, again, 64 bits, and this is the interface between our existing multi-AHB bus matrix that we had on the F4. So that's still there with all the uh, connections. I'll show you the diagram of that later. But what it does provide is the buffer between the slower external RAMs and the core itself. So this is a new bus feature that provides this interface. The rest of the internal RAM also sits on our multi-HB bus matrix. So that too is added to this um, AxiBus and also gains its own buffer inside the AxiBus. You've probably also noticed this branch here going off to the internal flash. It is a correct link. This will take you to the same internal flash array you saw up on the tightly coupled memory. This connection does not go through the ART accelerator. It is connected straight directly to the flash. You're probably thinking, what's the point of removing the ART accelerator from the equation? It's to do with the cache here. So the external memory bus matrix through the AXI bus is then interfaced to the core via the cache. Our ART accelerator pretty much is a cache. So it's just a, a way of caching all the different instructions and all the loops inside the system. So it does exactly the same effect as these caches that we have here. So your external memories in particular are slow. Um, SD RAM is running at half the core speed because of the external memory bus, runs at half the uh, system speed. So therefore, any instructions or any code you choose to access through the external memories, you will need to cache it to make sure that you guarantee your core zero wait states. The internal memories, which is the rest of the SRAM, that's not so bad because that's just on the bus matrix and it just needs a path into the core. So, so we actually route it through here and it gains the benefits of the decache. It's running at the same system clock speed anyway, the internal memory. Doesn't really need the decache, but it adds benefit to it in case you've got other things going on on the bus matrix that can potentially slow that down. The size of the decache that we have is proportional to the speed of the core. So at the moment, we've only allocated 4K um, for the cache for both instruction and data. As we move up through the devices that Jean-Marc was mentioning, as we progress into the new technologies and up to 400 megahertz, these values will change. So I think on your laptops, I think you've got a 2.8 gigahertz Pentium, and I think you've either got a one meg cache or a four meg cache, uh, four, yeah, four meg cache inside your Pentium processor. So it's all relative to how fast you want to run that core, will be how large you need to have your cache to guarantee your zero weight states.